Well, hey everybody, this is Kendra with All For Him Ministries, and I'm so glad that you joined us tonight at the King's Table. I'm here with Pastor Joey. Hi, Pastor Joey. Hey, Pastor Kendra, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing very well, excited for tonight. It's gonna be good. Yeah, I'm excited for tonight too. Do you have anything you wanna share, any kind of testimony of what's gone on in this last week with the Lord, or before we get into the teaching? Did you watch the game on Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch the game. I did watch the game and uh, and halftime and and uh, and all of it. So it was fun. Yeah, I, you know, I got the girls distracted long enough on a different movie on their iPad that I could focus in for a little bit. And uh, it was fun. It was good times. The difference about being back on the East Coast is it, it goes late now. It was you know in Montana it was awesome because the game was over and you still got plenty of night left. But yeah, when the yeah. game goes off here. You don't want to watch any of the interviews. You just want to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was a weird question to ask you what the Lord's done and then ask about the game. But that was pretty cool that all the um, the key players, everybody gave glory to God. I love that. <laughs> that was awesome, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, love, I love watching, we were watching a lot of the pregame stuff and to, to see, man, the, the impact of uh, that coach on the team and how nine years earlier he was serving at a Christian high school and yeah. painting the lines on the field. And I mean, in nine years time, man, it shows you what faithfulness will do for you. Amen. Yeah, I totally agree. I thought that was a cool story. I love had I love how they were um, had the underdog shirts that they kept wearing. You know, I love how God always uh, what does he say? He embraces the humble, but he rejects the pride. Right. And so yeah. I love the fact that he he's always shooting for the underdog. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's yeah. Good. And all, all those team players, they did their they did their work. They came to the game. They showed up. They gave their best. But right. I don't know. I kind of think that's a neat story. So anyways. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Well, well, last week we talked about, uh, we had a first series on um, kind of a, just a, a cool testimony and you had an amazing word that you released about worship. And so we kind of set it up last week that we were going to talk again about that. And so um, I think we'll just pray and we'll get into this and and um, have That's you good. release the jab. All right. So Father God, we thank you that again, we just get to come and we sit at the table with you tonight, Papa God. And we ask that you would just release a message and release an, a word over us. God, we just thank you for um, the word that you released last week and just all the feedback and all the comments we received of how it impacted people's lives and how they um, themselves were um, just encouraged to stand. And so we thank you, Lord, for that. And so we um, also come with expectation of what you will do in this time tonight, Father God. And so we just uh, pray a blessing and anointing over Pastor Joey as he releases this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, cool. Yeah, so I, I'd love to get after this. Uh, all day I've been praying uh, in my heart, getting more and more and more excited. And um, there... Uh, I was reminded uh, when I was preparing for this, um, even from last week to this week, I had a date with my daughter, Nora. I've got three daughters, Ella, Nora, and Lucy, and a son, Barrett, and uh, Nora is five. I uh, actually just turned six. And so we, uh, she wanted to go on a date, and she wanted to go swimming. And these kids love swimming. And so I was trying to find an indoor pool. We found one, went to it. And there was a swimming lesson going on and her day was crushed because we were going to do that and get some, some Froyo and, and it was going to be good. And uh, my wife found a place that we could go to. and I didn't know they had an indoor pool. And so we went to this workout facility, uh, paid the money, went in and they had like a lap pool um, that wasn't going to work because she's six and she just wants to goof around. And so they had this little side pool that was like, um, for like uh, rehabilitation stuff, you know, and it was like, you know, maybe six foot by eight foot. And so anyways, we got in, we made the best day of it. And, um, and it, I, she was swimming and I was remembering when she was first learning and in the stage where like uh, swimming is fun, but the jumping off the side was like the, the really, really fun thing, you know, not the swimming, but the, the jumping into dad's arms. And uh, God reminded me as I was getting into this message and this message is called Beyond Words. Uh, he reminded me when she was like first wanting to jump off the edge of the pool and, and, uh, and I would stand out there and I'd hold my arms out ready to catch her. And she'd say a little bit closer and I would slide like a little closer. And then she'd say a little bit closer. And then finally she would jump basically when my hands were on her hips, <laughs> you know, like there was, she wasn't jumping. I was just lifting her off and bringing her into the water, but that was all that it took for trust to begin to build. And then by, you know, the end of the week, you know, she's jumping, just launching herself off the end. But 
I feel like in my life, I'm so much like that in my faith walk with God. That I'm like, God, just a little bit closer. You know, I, I want to jump. My heart's to jump. I have faith that you'll catch me, but just a little bit closer. And um, I want to just share real quick out of Genesis 22, because this is like a huge jump. This is when God uh, has given Abraham Isaac. And uh, we're fast forwarding from last week where we're talking about Abram. Now he's Abraham. God has given him, blessed him with Isaac. Uh, he loves Isaac. Uh, him and Sarah, it's, you know, the joy uh, of their life there. And, and God said, hey, I, I want you to sacrifice your only son that I've given to you, you know. And so in Genesis 22 and verse 1, I just want to read a little bit and just share just really quickly some things that I see out of this. Um, it says in verse 1, sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much. I love how he reminds him, it's your only son. Take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much. And go to the land Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, Abraham got up early. I, I want to really jump into things right there. The next morning, he got up early. Um, obedience uh, is not obedience when procrastination is involved, right? That's right. And um, when, when, when you're wanting to operate in a lifestyle of worship, the more that procrastination is um, engaged in, 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 in enmeshed in your life, the less you will see a forward motion of God's favor in God. It's not that he doesn't want to show you favor, right. but your procrastination will oftentimes uh, uh, delay the opportunities of his provision to come, right? And so early the next morning, he gets up and uh, it says that he gets up and he chops the wood for the fire. And in my mind, I'm just kind of the person like, what was it like that morning? You get up, you smell the dew on the ground, you're walking out. How heavy did the ax feel? How, what, you know, the wood, is it split open and it smells like maybe that was aroma he had enjoyed before, but he hated that day. Like, yeah. what do you like to pick up the rope? that you're going to tie him up with. Like these things are going through my mind as I'm reading this stuff. This is like not the, Hey God, come closer and put your hands on my hips so I can jump in the pool. This is, I don't even see you in the pool, you know? Right. Um, and so he, he says he gets up early the next morning. Um, you've got to move beyond apprehension to action uh, when it comes to worship. There's just a point where you have to say, I, with my will, will choose yeah. uh, to worship you. And, and the thing that you have to remember is, though, God is always the God of grace in this. This is not legalistic, right? Because Abraham had years of success and failure, success and failure, success and failure. I mean, he had a long time to get to this point. Mm -hmm. But we always got to realize is that um, – discomfort is not always a sign of his displeasure. Right. Discomfort is often a, time, a sign of uh, uh, his favor in moving us forward into who he's called us to be. Yeah. So he gets up early the next morning and it says, uh, then uh, he chopped the wood for the fire and burnt offering and he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and he saw the place in the distance. On the third day, I really have wondered in my life how many times I got faithful past day one and faithful to day two. And, and, and just by day three, I'm like, I can't do it. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> how, how many times did I get short of seeing the place um, of where God wanted to provide? And, and, and this is what strikes me. Had Abraham bailed on this, he might've known God as um, his healer. He might've known God um, as of the love of his life, but he would never have known God as Jehovah Jireh, right? Mm -hmm. The God that provides. Yep. Uh, my concern oftentimes, and especially when it comes to my worship and how I'm obedient in my day-to-day -day life, <clears throat> what concerns me is that there's times in my life where perhaps I didn't get to day three because it's day three that Jehovah Jireh shows up. Day two is faithfulness. Day one is faithfulness. And fear can be involved and nerves can be involved. And, and God's not, he's not stressed out uh, by any of our apprehension, but by our action just to say, yeah, God, I'm just going to trust you. And, um, and listen, I realize I'm, as I'm speaking this, 
there's probably people that they feel like, man, I feel like I'm on day 45. I feel like I'm on, uh, you know, I feel like there's going to be people that listen like, yeah, Joey, I hear your word, but yeah, day three was like five years ago. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> and, and while I completely get that, I think that there's a value to say just one more day, God, mm -hmm. I, just one more day, because we get wrapped up with what the whole future is going to be. And I feel like God's saying, Hey, honor today. If you honor today, just honor today. Mm -hmm. Because if you honor today, the future is going to take care of itself. Yeah. And yeah. so he gets up early. And then on the third day, he sees it, right? So he sees the place in the distance. Um, I want to jump on down to verse nine. They're, they're, they're traveling. He has this conversation with his son saying, his son's like, hey, uh, we got the wood. We got the fire. And there's even a place in here it says where he hands his son the wood on his back. And then Abraham's carrying the knife and the fire. Right. And I'm thinking, man, that'd be a cool name for a song, Knife in the Fire. And so <laughs> they're in the knife in the fire and they're hiking up the mountain. And Isaac's got a great question. Hey, we got the wood, we got the fire, we got the knife, but we don't have the, the, the sacrifice. And, and his dad's like, hey, the sheep will be provided. It's going to happen. We get to verse nine and it says, when they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the, on the altar on top of the wood. What strikes me and is, is highlighted when I read this is then he tied his son. When you look at the timeline, like Abraham's not a young buck anymore. <laughs> and Isaac is like, mm -hmm. you know, Isaac's making this big journey. Um, and I would imagine he was probably at this point in life faster than his dad. Um, quicker when he starts realizing we don't have anything to sacrifice. Uh, but dad, you're wanting to tie me up. Like there's realization. He's not an idiot. He knows, Hey, there's no sheep here. It's me. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yet it says, gosh. then he tied up Isaac and laid him on the altar. It doesn't say Isaac at any point fought his dad. Um, I think there's something that happens when you watch somebody lead a life of honor in God, that it will inspire you to take risks yourself. And um, what I would wonder tonight is this, you might be patiently waiting uh, for the provision to come. Um, it might be early the next morning for you. Like it, I, I'm not sure where the people listening are going to fall in this, but this is what I would challenge because a life of worship will not only affect you, it will affect those around you, right? It, it's going to, uh, at some point, motivate somebody else. It's going to bring an inspiration or ultimately it's going to empower somebody else to worship and honor God. Man, what strikes me when he says he tied up his son is that in that moment, his son Isaac was not being detained or uh, uh, bound. He was being empowered, mm -hmm. right? Because he says, Isaac, in his mind, I've seen my dad trust God my whole life. And if this is what is going to happen and he's trusting God, then I'm going to trust God. And generations were empowered in that moment by being tied up and saying, and I'm thinking in my life, who am I empowering with the way that I worship and honor God? Mm. Because oftentimes the place of sacrifice, what we think is the place of sacrifice is going to be the place of provision. And when we stop on day two, we only think, man, that was going to be a terrible sacrifice. We never see the, the ram caught in the bushes, right? We never get to the place of provision. And so my heart in this is, is twofold. One is, depending on where you are, don't lose heart in the journey and don't get stopped on day two, but make it till you get to the point where you find God as Jehovah Jireh, your provider. And the other part is this, it's important not only that you find out that he's your provider, but that those around you are empowered by the way that you live your life. Because it's not just relationally us and him. It's in our life, it's relationally us and him and everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's a lot of people disenfranchised and disenchanted with the church right now as a whole, because there's people in the church that say, I love God, but there are all people that stop on day one or day two. There's rarely, rarely we see people that go on top of the mountain and say, yeah, here I am. I'm going to make the sacrifice. I've got the knife. I've got the fire. I've got the rope. Let's do this. Yeah. And so my heart tonight is that there'll be people that be empowered. Um, this is a quick story. Um, a couple of years ago, I had done, felt like the Lord lead me to do a 40 day fast. I remember that. Uh, right, before, right before a cruise. Uh, yeah. This was before the one in Montana that- uh, Oh, okay. You know, it was a different one. 
And that was the first one I'd ever done. It was, it was a week before we were going on a cruise. And, um, and I knew that I was going to throw down on that cruise. And I remember the day God said, I want you to do this. And, uh, and, and in his graciousness, he let me start after the cruise. But towards the end, I remember starting to watch like cooking shows like Rachel Ray and all this kind of stuff. Cause I'm like, I'm really hungry. <laughs> I want to cook things now and stuff I'd never cared about before. And uh, that Christmas, in fact, I remember asking for a pan. There was a particular like cooking pan I wanted. And I was so lame. And uh, <laughs> so my brother-in-law is a really good cook. And so he starts teaching me after the fest, he starts teaching me all these recipes and how to do the stuff. Cause I didn't know how to do anything. And, um, and so one night we're making uh, quesadillas and, and, and we're putting the chicken in and all this stuff. And my, the only seasonings I knew in life was salt and pepper. Okay. And he said, well, let me show you one more. And he breaks out this bottle and, and uh, written on it's cumin. I was like, I've never heard of cumin. And he's like, what's well, about to change your life? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I take it out and I, I'm unfamiliar and I just sprinkle a little bit. He's like, come on. He's like, get real about this. Start, just shake it. And I mean, I put it on there and it was amazing. And I had tasted that flavor before, but I never knew what it was, right? And so from that moment on, I became a lover of cumin and I started putting it in everything, like, because I felt like a chef when I did it. It wasn't just salt and pepper. Any, anybody can do salt and pepper, but you use cumin, that's, you know, next level. And so I started putting cumin in everything. And I remember one night I was making spaghetti for Ashley and I had the sauce and I was cooking it and I was like, let me throw a little cumin in this and see what happens. And I come to find out it doesn't work real well in Italian dishes. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we ended up ordering out that night. And, uh, but I remember I used to use that stuff in everything. And um, I remember that it's kind of a dumb story and it seems like it's trailing off somewhere that doesn't, doesn't seem important. But the reality is this, I feel like in worship for a lot of us, we see God or we see our relationship with Jesus as the cumin in our life. Um, I'm going to add him to my marriage. I'm going to add him to a uh, relationship with my kids. I'm going to add him uh, to my workplace or to school or whatever it is. I'm going to add him to this or that. And the reality is that he's not the cumin. He's the meal. And, um, and when we make that shift in our minds, this life is all, all about him. Yeah. It's all about him. It's not, I'm inviting him into this area to season this or season that. So no, this life, is, he is the meal. Yes. And when you get to that point, it's a game changer. Yeah. And it won't only be a game changer for you, seeing God as a God of provision. I want to encourage somebody tonight, and you're on day three, and I want to tell you, you think you're about to the point of sacrifice, and you're really about to the point of provision. Amen. All you can see is the fire yeah. and the knife, but really what you're going to wake up to is, is seeing the ram in the bush and seeing God's provision. I believe that wholeheartedly. And I just prophetically speak that over some people listening tonight, that you're coming into this season of knowing God as Jehovah Jireh. You've known him as uh, the healer. You've known him as different things in your life, but you're coming into a season of knowing him as the provider. And in that season, I believe it's going to be a season of, of empowering those around you. And so Kendra, man, that's my heart tonight. Like I know your desire in ministry is to see others released and empowered in what God's called them to do. Mm -hmm. It's a huge desire of my heart. But one of the things that holds that back is when a life of worship is only um, as good as the season that we're in, meaning my life of worship is only as good as I feel. My life of worship is only as good as the bank account looks or as my marriage is or as my kids are doing. Um, man, my life of worship is all about, no, God, you're, you're the meal. And so I worship you when it's raining and I worship you when it's shining, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's all the same. Paul says, man, in every season, I'm good. Whether mm -hmm. I'm hungry or I'm full, uh, whether I don't have a lot or I have a lot, um, I'm good because mm -hmm. he's, you know, right. And, um, so that's my encouragement tonight. I believe that, uh, there's going to be some people that, that you watch and after you watch tonight, um, you might have some prayer requests that stir up within you. Get on the prayer wall and post those things on the prayer wall. A um, couple of takeaways that I would say um, is, uh, and, and, and you might have some here, but one of the takeaways I, I, would, I would encourage you to have in this is um, don't procrastinate the necessary. Um, agreement is not obedience. There's a lot of people in church that say amen to a good sermon but they never change anything about their life. Or you read something in the book, and you think, wow, that was awesome, but you never apply it. Um, find the last few things that you said amen to and see if you've applied it to your life. Um, 
<clears throat> whether it has to do with your health, whether it has to do with uh, financially, you know, instilling the things that God's teaching you in his word, whatever it has to do with, find the last few things you said amen to and see if you're being obedient because agreement and obedience aren't the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing I would say is this, is um, one of the greatest ways you can honor God is honor today. Um, today's worthy of your focus. Today's worthy of your attention. Even if the excitement seems like it's coming Saturday or two years down the line or whenever it would be, uh, honor to God by honor God by honoring today. Wake mm -hmm. up and, and, and make it memorable. Advance the kingdom of God. Make the gates of hell tremble. Um, today you have purpose because you have breath. And today is not just something you get through to you know, the next best thing, man, I want to tell you, I, I feel like there's a lot of people that, and, and I can say this from experience, there's nothing worse than going through a week or a month and you get to the end and say, man, I wasted the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a kid the other day, 19 years old. He said, Joey, I look back at 2017 and I wasted the whole thing. Mm -hmm. How do I not do that with this next year? Man, that's hard. I can say, man, you, a whole year of life. Um, but one of the ways you get past that is you honor today. Yeah. <clears throat> so, can any thoughts, anything that hits you? Yeah, no, I just thought that's so good, Joey, because um, you said um, delayed ob obedience is disobedience, right? And it's so true because when God asks us to do, um, when, and when we don't do it, then it, it, it really is disobedience. It's like when you ask your kiddos, you know, hey, take the garbage out and they don't do it. Ultimately, they're just not obeying you and they're walking, they're, they're responding in their own will. And so when we surrender the will, we're honoring the father. And yeah. so when he says, you know, um, take the garbage out, <laughs> we take the garbage out. And if we don't, right, sometimes there's a consequence to that. And so I think God is always desiring us to walk into his promises and his will. And so in, in the obedience, there's always a blessing, but in dis disobedience, in the delay, there's, there's also a consequence to that, right? For sure. I mean, the day Goliath went down, David was just delivering groceries, you know? And so, uh, you know, that, that honoring the day and saying, okay, yeah, I, I will be faithful with what seems mediocre or tedious or whatever it is Yeah. in life, man we want the sexy. We want the, the big explosion. We, we want Super Bowl Sundays. Uh, we want that stuff. Um, but man, you know, it, it, it blew me away. I was watching a, a video on um, Facebook. I, I don't know what's called. It's not called Facebook Live, but it was called Tom versus Time. It was actually about Tom Brady. Oh. And so it, it was crazy because he was going into this season. It was picking up right before he's going into this season. And it was showing him with a, um, a throwing coach. Mm. And I mean, they were working hard. And I'm thinking, man, this guy has broken almost every record considered by almost everybody to be the best that ever be. And he's out there before this season, and he's working with the throwing coach trying to get better mechanics. And the coach said, guys at this level aren't trying to get 5% better. They're just trying to get 1% better. Right. Um, grinding at it, you know. And, and, and there's this faithfulness of just saying, I will do the mundane. Because those things, you never know what day is going to be the day you take down the life. It's probably yeah. going to be the day you're delivering groceries, right? Right, right. And, you know, the word says that to be faithful with little well, yeah. uh, is entrusted to be faithful with much. And I think that I love the word of not being discouraged because um, the day to day, you just never know when you just never know when it's going to click. But I think that sometimes we get we get tired or we feel like it's never going to happen. And so we just we all are human nature and we fall short just a little bit of ah, what does it matter for tomorrow? But, you know, even in this journey of building um, the, the platform that we're on, the King's Table and the Warriors Wall and Kendra All for Him, you know, a couple of years ago when it was spoken over me that I would have a global ministry, I had no idea what that meant. And I remember taking Dr. Moss to lunch and saying, tell me what that means. You just prophesied that over me. But what does that look like? And she, and, you know, she said, you're going to do online teachings and you're going to equip people globally. And I remember Joey thinking, okay, and I said, and I said out loud, I said, okay, Lord, that's a yes and amen, but I have no idea how you're going to do that. But here's the cool thing about God. When you know God's told you to do something, you don't know, have to know how. You just have to know that he said it. And then it is the yes and amen to say, I'm going to get up each day. And I have to be totally transparent in this whole process. I, I had no idea how to start this, but I found somebody who did. 
And then I invested in being part of a team so that I can learn and grow. And it has been like the most stretching that I've ever done ever, but it's the day to day. And I keep saying, all I keep telling myself is show up today, just get up and show up. And if I will get up and show up and be obedient to hear from the Lord, and, and I just get up every day and say, what are we doing today, God? Because if I were to go way ahead and look up as to what it will someday potentially be, I don't know, he knows. I just know I need to be faithful in the little and I need to get up every day and be obedient to what he says. And he's brought us even to just you and I coming together. And you're so right. I'm so passionate about equipping people and releasing them and watching them come into their full purpose. And it's hard because, um, you know, I always tell my kids, we, you know, they're, when we come through stuff or we're challenging things, my kids are like, you know, I always say you always take the high road and you always be the one to be apologetic first. And I remember one time that he's like, when do I have to stop taking the high road? I said, never, because, <laughs> because you're called to a higher standard. And, and, um, and it's, it's the cream always rises to the top, you know, and it's that old 80, 20 or 90, 10 rule. It's like, um, when you know, and I think you said it well, Joy, it's like, when you know that you are created, our whole entire purpose of creation is to worship God. Everything worships God. And when we can get our line, our lives in check with that and realize that everything is his, um, we are called to be stewards of everything of his, but he is Lord of our lives. And that he's already, before we were even born, he had created our destiny. And so we just have to tune into the voice of God and walk it out. And we get to do that in abundance and joy. Yeah. And yes, there's struggles along the way, but that's where we have each other to come alongside of each other. And so, and say, help me, you know, and, and help me so that I'm not disobedient or I don't sit down because it is, it's the one more time around before the walls fall, or yeah. it's the one more day, it's the fourth day, but it's always, the enemy will always push us to, his intention is to stop us before we fulfill. Mm -hmm. And so I've always said to people, if you don't want to push through, that's when you have to push through because that's where the breakthrough comes through. It's on the other side of the push that the blessing comes. And then you're going to get there and you go, oh man, I'm so glad I didn't delay. I'm glad I didn't sit back. I'm glad I didn't quit because that's the whole intention of the enemy is to keep us from actually pushing through. Yeah. You know, and I, I appreciate that, you know, when I get into Abraham's story, he knows the love of God so much in his failures. You know what I mean? He knows what it feels like to be loved in the middle of failing. Yeah. And so uh, the encouragement for people to listen, when you hear us saying, push through, be strong in this, um, it doesn't mean God has frowned upon any of your failures. Like mm -hmm. you have to remember this moment is still happening after Ishmael is already alive, right? <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the guy that knows God's love in the middle of massive life mistakes. And so you can have had those failures and still get up and push through. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ishmael didn't um, take away the promise of Isaac. And I think somebody needs to know that tonight. I don't know if I said that last week, but I feel like the reminder again is Ishmael did not take away the promise of Isaac, you know, and it's so critical to know that um, the hand of God is, is so for his sons and his daughters. Yes. And, um, and when you know that, and when, when that grips you, then you can make it to day three. Mm -hmm. You can make it to whenever the sacrifice, you can walk up the mountain carrying the, 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 the knife and the fire. You can do those things when you're so in the grip of God's love that you know. I, mean, he, I, I love from Abraham's life when he gets uh, to Canaan and, and all of his flocks have grown and like he's got all this, you know, uh, livestock and, and then, um, his son Lot, or his, not his son, his nephew Lot, I, they have all these animals, and the shepherds are getting mad because there's not enough resources. And um, Abram's, uh, the elder statesman, it's his choice of what he should want to choose, what land to get, and what Lot should have. And he's so in the grip of God's love that he says to Lot, Hey, you choose. Wow. Right? What, what is it like to be so in the grip of God's love that somebody else's choices can't even knock you out of God's favor? Yeah. You're so in the grip saying, yeah, lot you choose because wherever you choose, I'm still going to end up where God wants me. Right. 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 Cause me, I'm like, no, I'll choose. I want that. <laughs> be so in the grip of God's love and knowing that he's got you to say, yeah, you choose. I'm good. Yeah. I, I, your, your choices in your life can never affect me so much that it gets me out of God's plan. Right. Yeah. And so when you know these kind of things, man, those are the things that will empower you. And that's why I say 
and find out the things you said amen to and be faithful for those because those are the, probably going to be the moments where it's coming to the side of the pool and you feel the hands on the hips and then you jump. And yeah. then it's a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further till the days where you can jump and you don't see him in the pool and he still catches you. Um, those mountaintop moments, right? Yes. Yes. I love that. <laughs> so, okay. So you said don't procrastinate. Um, um, agreement is not the same as obedience, which was the go back to your, to your, um, your amens that you said yes and amen to God and, mm -hmm. and to take action. And so I want to encourage you, like, um, one of the things that we want to equip you with is, um, you can come here and you can eat at the King's table and we can feed you with, um, a, a, the word and downloads and information, but the action is the important part, you know, and that's where you guys come in where um, I really want you to get a, you know, a journal and we want to equip you with a journal. We're going to um, actually include that as we get this up and running for you, but um, to take action. And I always think that's the hard part because right when you put it to, when you, when you take action, it means you have to actually apply yourself and you have to do something. So when Joey says, I want you to go back and look at all the places that you've said yes and amen, write those down. So get a piece of paper and take action, write them down. And these are the things that you said yes to, to the Lord. And then I want you to pray into those. I want you to ask God, how do you want to see this happen? Cause he already has the how we just have to commit to the yes. And then we have to be willing to step and in the forward movement in the step and the action of, of, of partnering with him. And I always say we're co-laboring with him. Isn't that beautiful? That, um, then I want you to write down like two or three things that you're going to do to start to align yourself back to the yes and amen that you, that you've said to him. And as you do that, he's going to give you the, he's going to give you the insight. He'll give you the wisdom as to what those things are, but um, start to write them down. And then I want you to start to pray into them because as you begin to pray into them, things are going to release and things are going to open up so that you actually um, start to have forward movement. And I, I can tell you from time and time again, of whether it was a prophetic word or if it was something the Lord gave me in a dream or in worship or um, whatever it is, when you take that and you understand that he's asking something of you and you, and then you apply, you meet him and you apply it, you're going to be wowed at what he'll do. And that's what he's doing is he's giving you nuggets and it's almost like, like stepping stones. Like this is the next step, take the next step, take the next step. And so he's guiding you. And so you just have to be obedient and, um, and respond to that. Right. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. And for the people you feel like, uh, that you feel like, man, I feel like God, if you're saying to yourself, I just feel like God's silent though. I'm not hearing him say anything. I always encourage people, if you feel like you're in a season of silence, go back to the last thing you either read in scripture or you know God said to you. I don't care if it's when you're five years old. Go back to the last thing and say, have I done that? Um, because oftentimes we're looking for him to speak when we haven't completed the last thing or, or, or been faithful with the last thing. Um, but action is, that's why the, I felt like this message was called Beyond Words there's no other way to do it. It's, and, and listen, everybody watching, it's a lot easier for us to say it than it is for you to do it, but it doesn't mean it's not right. So, so yeah. engage, find other people, get people to hold you accountable, uh, get people that are going to call you out and, and you know, and, and just keep you, you know, hold your feet to the fire on things that you need to make commitments to. And if it is, if you are in a season where you're just like, maybe you're praying for somebody to, to see your child come back to Jesus. Maybe they're, you know, got to college and just flipped out or wigged out or something. Whatever your season is, man, find people. I love that scripture says, don't forsake the gathering together the fellowship. Yes. This is no Lone Ranger stuff that we're in. This is community stuff. There's community here. You can get on the wall. There'll be people praying for you, the warrior's wall. There's all these kind of things you, you can get connected with. Man, find connection. Uh, because there's an empowerment there and there's a strength that can come from there because God ordained it and set it up that way. Yes. It's highly to do that. Yes. And I'm just going to encourage and take on to that because um, I do want to reiterate that we definitely are a community here and we have a Facebook community for the marketplace, for the ministry well house, for just building a lifestyle. And so we want to invite you into that and I'll put those links down below. Um, and then, um, you know, also if you feel like you want somebody to come alongside of you and just even like help you strategize, we offer complimentary strategy sessions and then we offer coaching and we do group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that is a thing because 
both Joey and I are crazy passionate about people walking to their fullness. And we both have had people come alongside of us and speak into our life and challenge us and mentor us. And, um, and we've had years of doing the same thing and having, you know, being able to, to come alongside of other people. So, um, you know, since you mentioned that, I'm just going to mention that too. And I'll go ahead and put those links in down below, but we believe in community. And like I said, we're not just here just to throw, you know, just to release information. Yes, we are, but we want you to activate. And so we want to invite you into those communities and we'll definitely, I'll put that down here as we finish up. And then the third thing you said, um, Joey was just honoring the day. And, um, and I think that's just so simple. You know, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I just say, good morning, Papa, what are we doing today? And I um, have a routine of just in the morning, just waking up and just worshiping him first, like getting in my word and, and worshiping him and praying him. And then I've made a practice of at night, um, as I'm going to sleep, I just get myself into a place of worshiping him again and just thanking him for the day and the things that happened and that I have a bed to lay in and that I have a home and that, you know, I mean, just everything. Like we have a th I don't know, thousands of things we could worship him for or thank him for, give praise to him. And so I've kind of started this practice of starting my day and ending my day and honoring him and worshiping him. Absolutely. And in the in-between, do, do, do practical things. Uh, when I go to get food for our family, I order my wife's food before mine. Like we're going through a drive through or something. So, I mean, it's simple, but I'm getting my, I, I want to get hers first. If we're making, you know, our plates at night, uh, get the kids first, like uh, just implementing simple things where there's honoring and service because once you create that habit and that lifestyle, man, uh, those are those are game changers, you know. Um, I haven't even started doing just things like I won't leave the bedroom uh, until I make the bed. Yep. Uh, you know, just these things that, that, you know, in the mornings, even when I know I'm not leaving the house, I get up, get a shower, get ready. Um, these are just things that help me approach the day in such a way that I'm going to honor it. And not just, and I'm not saying there's not days where, man, you know, there's certainly pajama days. I'm not saying there's not Sabbath. You don't hear us say that, never, you know, grind 24 seven. There are Sabbath days. But what I'm saying is on, on days that aren't Sabbath, man, get after it. Love yeah. somebody well, honor God well. Yeah. Um, and, uh, man, you know, when, when, you, when you wake up and you say, God, I'm going to honor you today, not only by saying how much I love you, but by serving others, it, you get a lot of focus off yourself, man, and it opens the door to have a lot more insight into your own life. When you're looking at others and serving others, man, there, there seems to become a little bit more clarity with how to operate in your own life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, so praise God for the people that are getting up. Praise God for the people that fell on day two. But God's saying, uh, even though the righteous fall seven times, they get back up. Seven times the righteous fall, and each time they get back up, man. Praise God for those that are watching tonight, and you're like, man, I gave up six months ago. Today's a new day. Amen. Right? His righteousness is new every morning. I'm so excited for the people that you're watching this, and you're like, yeah, I gave up a long time ago. Man, praise God. Hey, if anything God is, and he can't change his nature, he's always a redeemer. Um, even if you've been Jonah in your life and you've been running the opposite direction, praise God for today and for this moment. You can say, yeah, I've wasted the last five years, but tonight's a new night or today's a new day or whatever time you're watching this, but you can turn it around right now uh, because his hand is on you and he's for you. Amen. Amen. I come in agreement with that. And I just speak uh, to dry bones to come alive. Yeah. and that there would just be new life. And so um, I just want to pray over us as we just close up tonight. So Father God, um, just what Joey said, we just pray to those who, um, I just speak life over anybody who's watching this right now and has um, just felt like they've missed it, they've lost it, they, they just can't redo. And so God, we thank you that you do. You are a God of redeeming, a redeeming God, and that you love to take broken vessels. And Lord, I just seem to see that you're taking broken vessels tonight. All of us are broken but you're taking broken vessels and you're, um, you're just making new masterpieces out of them. And I see you um, taking gold and, and um, putting back the pieces. And Lord, I just speak to, um, I just thank you that, um, that you see every single person. There isn't a person that you've missed. You've created every single one of us. And, and, um, and so I just speak to hope tonight, Lord. I, I ask for restored hope to be released. Um, I thank you for new beginnings. I thank you that um, that just even in this time that we've had, um, God, that there's just a stirring 
that, that there's going to be a stirring of restored hope and new beginnings. And so, Lord, we speak life into those. And um, yeah, God, I just thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, God. You're so good. You're so good. And I thank you, God, that you, um, you're just moving on people right now. And so, God, um, we come alongside of them and we say a yes and amen to new beginnings. And Lord, we pray favor over them. God, I pray for divine connections. Lord, I pray that as, um, as they just realign themselves with you and come back to the plumb line, God, that um, there would be restored visions and restored um, dreams. Yeah, thank you, God. Lord, we thank you that you're so faithful and that you never waver. And Lord, that we always get to come back to you and that you're always waiting for us. And so God, um, bring. I, I just ask for um, restored relationships right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. Are you, anything else you have, Joey? Anything you else? Know, I, would, I would encourage you uh, when you get off this video tonight, posture yourself hold your hands out in front of you and uh, just say god I, I i just thank you that i would just receive your love right now and i would just sense and feel your peace right now just posture yourself in just a way to say god i'm just going to receive from you um and just be still i mean maybe there's things on in the background maybe somebody's watching a tv in the room or something but still just posture yourself just for a moment even it looks ridiculous to other people in the room just say god i just want to be still before you just let them just pour into you it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yeah. Amen. Well, we love you guys. And we thank you for joining us tonight and just um, hanging out with us or whenever you get to watch this. And like I said, I'll put a couple links down below of things that we didn't <laughs> intend to mention, but we did mention. And um, community is so important to us, you know, um, and it doesn't matter where we are in the world. Joey's on the East Coast right now and I'm on the West Coast and here we are gathering and at the king's table together to be with you guys and um so throw in your comments um we would love to respond and um next week we're going to talk about what happens actually happened when we worship i had a divine um, encounter with the lord and he just showed me a beautiful download and so um we're going to share that with you next week and um one of the things joy talked about also was honor we're going to do a whole teaching series on the culture of honor and what that looks like so um keep connecting with us, following with us, get us, get in the loop and get on in the, um, in the Facebook communities. And I'll put all that down below, but we love you guys. We want to pray with you and, um, we look forward to meeting with you next week. Amen. Amen. See you next week. Joey, it's so good to see you. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. Y'all have a great night. Okay.